Hey, everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Taking a look at the infrared satellite imagery this morning. This storm system still with us off our coastline, really hammering California, by the way. Check out my California Weather Watch page. If you do not know, I do another video for California. But you can see this is spreading precipitation back up across southwest Oregon as we speak. This will be coming up across the region as we go through the day today. Nothing too extreme. A few inches of snow for the Cascades. But then we have kind of a pattern change, and you can see that next batch of cold air off the south coast of Alaska. That's headed our way. It's going to march down across the Gulf of Alaska and towards the Pacific Northwest. Then probably some ridging and a break afterwards. And then maybe we'll get active as we go through the first week of January. So here we go. You can see the initial stages of that cold air spilling off the coast of Alaska right there. And the infrared satellite imagery that is on its way to the Pacific Northwest, which of course is down here to the bottom right. So 5,000 feet or 850 millibars. You can see that cooler air across Northwest Canada portions of Alaska. And there's the Pacific Northwest to the bottom right. Put that into motion. Here comes our cooler air moving down across the Gulf of Alaska. And you can see some of the Arctic air sliding down into interior portions of British Columbia. Some of that is trying to leak out. And this will impact portions of eastern Washington, Idaho, and western Montana as well. With the cooler air mass, some lower snow levels moving in here also, as I talked about last night. And then we start to do some ridge building as we scroll on in towards the end of December. And then after that, you can see the Gulf of Alaska start to get a bit more active as we go through December 30th. And hopefully that'll start to bring some systems back into the Pacific Northwest. And we can turn on the snowmaking machine for the Cascades of Washington in Oregon, which we desperately need. So winter weather advisories are up right now. And if I click on that, you'll see at the bottom here, I talked about this in some detail last night, Friday morning, and then we go to Friday evening, snow levels dropping below 1,000 feet for some locations. And with the convective nature of the convergent zone, you could bring some of those snowflakes down towards sea level. Kind of a novelty, but it is our first snow of the season, likely for mainly areas north of Seattle. And uh, yeah, so I thought I'd mention it. Might give some brief accumulations here, again, depending on just how active the convergent zones are. Total snow accumulations across the mountain, six to 12 inches. So we are getting a decent shot of snowfall here. And it's a good thing because we're gonna dry out for a few days thereafter. Looking at the Oregon Cascades, mainly above 4,000 feet, some accumulations up to 11 inches as well. So yeah, nice little shot of snowfall here with the system rolling in right now and then through the day on Friday and through Saturday morning. So Spokane National Weather Service here, again, as we go through Friday night, that cold front will be impacting portions of eastern Washington here as well. But a nice graphic on what to expect today and tomorrow. Winter weather advisories are up. Pendleton National Weather Service does include portions of the Washington Cascades in their forecast zone. And you can see 4 a.m. Friday to 7 a.m. Saturday, three to nine inches of snow. Be careful for some winter driving conditions across eastern Oregon, portions of eastern Washington also. And Missoula National Weather Service. I think I showed this graphic last night as well. They're talking about that cold front coming in here as we go through the Friday evening hours. Uh, Boise also, this colder air mass will be affecting especially higher terrains around Boise and not so much for the valley areas here, but you will definitely feel the difference coming up. So if we take a look at 925 millibars, it's about 2,500 feet off the surface. So what you want to see for Western Washington to get snow down into the lower elevations is about negative one or colder. So let's see if we get there. We're going to scroll off in towards Friday and then you see the colder air mass start to move over the region as we go through Friday night and we do get there probably again at some point Friday evening and Friday night you see the much colder air across portions of Alberta and British Columbia some of that trying to leak out here into portions of eastern Washington we'll, we'll even get a little bit of outflow here across British Columbia I'll show you that here more in a moment it's not a big arctic outbreak or anything of that nature but you can see the colder air mass swoop across the Pacific Northwest as we go all the way on in through Saturday night then that moves out and we start to warm back up again here as we get some ridging across the region. Now, this is the European model. What you want to see generally with a system that moves through here, you'd like us to be in the blue to get any kind of lower elevation snowfall, but this just might do it with some of that convective nature that is the convergence zone activity moving across the region. So again, there's that polar low kind of swings by there across British Columbia, just clipping the Pacific Northwest. And then that moves out and we get ridge apotamus here as we go towards the end of the month and on in towards the early portion of January. But you can kind of see troughing there starts to redevelop off to our Northwest here. So hopefully 
hopefully that starts to change the pattern back sooner rather than later. And maybe we'll start to turn on the mountain snow machine here as we go through maybe New Year's Day or whatnot. We'll see how that goes. We'll watch that over the next few days. I'll show you some extended forecast stuff here a little bit later in the video also. So accumulated positive snow depth change in inches. So there's the initial storm system that's kind of spinning off our coastline here, spreading some moisture northbound. It's not a lot of snowfall with that system. But as we go through Friday, that ex cold frontal system arrives and you can see some decent amounts, mainly for the North Cascades and some of the Rocky Mountains there as well. And again, you can't rule out a little bit of lower elevation snowfall north of Seattle. Uh, again, kind of a novelty, but it could accumulate even down to the lower elevations for a brief period. And then we go on in through the, uh, the upcoming days. We go through the end of the month and yeah, it's not looking good. You don't see much snow building up there after. And if we take a look at where we are right now, you see the Washington, the Oregon Cascades doing really bad. The Yakima Basin also not doing well. Some areas across the Northern Cascades are doing better because some isolated locations there, but yeah, pretty meager conditions across a lot of the Washington, Oregon Cascades, Northeast Oregon, Idaho Panhandle not doing good as well, but you can see it's a little bit better across Western Montana and some portions of Central Idaho. So we badly need this snow machine to get rolling here and get some cooler air and some cooler systems. We just haven't had it so far yet this year. Now, looking at accumulated positive snow depth change in inches on the high resolution models, we got the North American model here on the left, the high resolution rapid refresh on the right. Put that into motion, you see a little bit of snowfall occurring today across the higher train. Again, not amounting to too much, but as we go through Friday, you can see it start to pile up across some of the Cascades. The HER is definitely showing better amounts versus the North American model. It's probably going to end up being somewhere in between, but you also see what happens as we're going through Friday evening across some of Snohomish County there. You're getting some of the snow trying to get down into the lower elevation. So it's just kind of a nice reminder. I don't want that to catch people off guard, and it is nice to see. The HER also shows some bands coming across Southwest Washington. I don't know about that. I haven't seen too much of that in the other models right now as well, but we will be watching for stuff like that here over the next day or so. Taking a look here at the 850 millibar temperatures, what you want to see for that lower snow level to get down into Western Washington is about negative six C. So this is close to 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere. And so we scroll on in through the day on the 26th this is for tomorrow. You see the colder air mass start to work its way in. And then you see we get towards negative six as we go through the evening hours there as we go through the day on Friday. So yeah, that colder air mass will be coming in here. And again, with the convergent zone showers out there, the convective nature of them, we might might be bringing some of the snow levels down to lower elevations. You can kind of see things cooling down across southern central BC as we go on in through Saturday morning. So taking a look at composite reflectivity, I'll show you what some of those convergent zones look like. There goes the precipitation today. You can kind of see it's rather brief and fairly light. And then you can see things start to flow out of the Northwest back into the Pacific Northwest. And you see some of these convergent zones here as we go through Friday evening. So we'll watch out for those here over the next couple of days. And again, piling up a bit of snow across the higher terrain. And then it kind of lingers on through Saturday morning. That's kind of the key period because we'll be cooling off as we go through Saturday morning and maybe uh, some additional accumulations there. Again, kind of spotty and isolated, but could be a little bit of an impact there for some select locations. And then you see we start to dry out there as we go through the day on Saturday. European, we always check with the European model. Let's see what it says. There's the initial shot of some precipitation and then the cooler mass arrives as we go through Friday night. And it does show some of those lower snow levels as well. So we will watch out for that for some snow flying across some of the lower hilltops surrounding the Puget Sound and some of Western Washington. And then we scroll on in through the rest of the month and you can see we do dry out quite dramatically as we go all the way towards the end of December. Now, Something interesting here I like showing, 925 millibars, this is wind, so you can see the, uh, the low pressure system off the California, Oregon coast. Some gusty winds today for some of southern Oregon. We're getting the east winds flying here as we go through this morning, and we're even getting some northeast winds. That's not associated with Arctic air, though, across British Columbia. But yeah, we're getting some gusty winds. There's a stampede gap you can see across central Washington there as well. And then that starts to bring some southerlies as we go through tonight. Then you see the colder air mass there start to arrive out of the north and west. So the southerlies start to get replaced with some westerlies. And you can see that cooler air start to flow back into the region. Down the Strait of Juan de Fuca, Chehalis Gap. There's the Olympic Mountains and the Strait of Georgia also could be bringing some convergent zone activity by this time. You can see it wrapping around the Olympics where it meets. It kind of pushes 
up into the atmosphere and could be tapping some of that colder air aloft. Now we scroll on in towards Saturday morning. Look at this. We even get a little bit of outflow down the Fraser River Valley. It's not a lot. It's not a huge Arctic outbreak or anything of that nature. And also something on the flip side, the Okanagan River Valley is another cold air conduit, a lesser known one up into the interior portions of British Columbia. We also turn northerly there. So some of that cooler air trying to leak out with that as well. So it's going to get a bit chilly here, especially as we go on in through Friday night into Saturday morning. And then the winds start to die back a little bit as the system swings through as we go through Saturday night. So if we look at apparent temperature, this is taking wind chill into account. So, you know, you're kind of looking chilly today. You can see across much of the region. We're not warming up too much there. And then we go on through the day Friday. See that cooler air mass start to arrive out of the northwest pushing across the region. And then you'll see this uh, as we go through Saturday morning. Look at some of these teens out there in the Fraser River Gap and some of the higher terrain, eastern Washington. It's going to feel pretty chilly out there. Even down across Seattle, Portland, you'll feel like it's in the low 30s there by Saturday morning there. So yeah, much colder air mass arriving. And if we look at the European, there's our initial system here. And then we get the troughing with that cooler air arriving, settling down across the region. Then we really build that ridge toward the end of the month of December, as I've said several times already. Positive snow depth change in inches in the North American model, just kind of doing our homework here and you see some better amounts across the Cascades, but it doesn't rule it out across the lower elevations there. So again, we'll watch that and we'll go over that again tomorrow morning and try to fine tune and iron out some of those details. Also some cape coming in here as well with this colder air mass aloft. You can kind of see some of this convective available potential energy moving in. Can't completely rule out a lightning strike with some of this convergence zone activity. We'll see about that. Not something really that I probably should even be mentioning that chances are probably low, probably 20% or less. Now, looking at Quilly, you can see the colder air arrive and again, dip down just below that magic negative six point there and kind of the upper level heights of the 500 millibars, but then quickly rebound and there goes our ridge. So yeah, pretty high confidence that that ridge is coming towards the end of the year. Now, looking at the extended forecast, artificial intelligence model. So there goes our systems. We start to dry out here. And you can see the storm track really pointed at southeast Alaska, portions of western British Columbia, north of Vancouver Island as we go through the 29th, the 30th. And finally, as we go on in towards the New Year's Day, it starts to slide down across southwest BC on the 31st, actually, and then slides down across western Washington. So we'll keep watching over the next couple of days to see when the storm track will, will return towards the Pacific Northwest. And who knows what's going to happen after that. Maybe Maybe some stronger storms so we'll have to just kind of wait and see and we'll be visiting that daily and if we look at the artificial intelligence ensemble members here or the ensemble mean, I should say. This is the entirety of North America. Here we are in the Pacific Northwest, kind of the left of this image. There's our trough we're dealing with currently. Our next week system swings by right there. That's the one I've been talking about with some lower elevation snowfall. Then the ridge really gets established here as we go towards the end of the month. And then you can kind of see the troughing gets reestablished as we go on in through the first week of January. That ridging moves out south of the Aleutian Islands. Not a bad signal there for some mountain snows at least. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll start to flirt with some lower elevation snowfall at some point as we go through the month of January. Who knows? We'll continue to watch that, but definitely not a bad signal here as we scroll out towards the 10 days with the ridging starting to get established there out over or south of the Aleutian Islands. Kind of a, a, a La Nina type pattern setting up, hopefully anyway. And check out the Patreon page if you like. The link should be in the uh, the, the description down below. Uh, hopefully everybody's having a good Christmas out there. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.